Bare knuckle boxing can be dated as far back as the times of ancient Greece, who had the sport as part of their Olympic Games. Today, in America, we have modern glove boxing, while bare knuckle boxing can be considered to be more underground and significantly less popular. There was a time, though, that a bare knuckle fighting match would gather a large crowd of passionate fans and gamblers. This was back in the 19th century when it was at its peak popularity, despite the sport being outlawed in most of the states of America at the time. In this documentary, I will explain why the Queensberry rules were chosen over the London prize ring rules in the late 19th century. Which brings me to Jem Mace, who was known for having an extremely long career in prize fighting and later helped spread the use of gloved boxing over bare fists. He fought official matches for up to 35 years, from which he lost and won the title several times. Jem Mace was originally born in Beeston, UK, which is a city in the Norfolk County where he stayed for his entire childhood and over half his 20s. He worked as a horse dealer and would occasionally put on the gloves for a boxing contest for all comers. He didn't have his fist bare knuckled fist bite, first bare knuckled fist, fist bite until 1855 against John Slasher Slack on the 2nd of October. He won the match against John and later defeated Bill Thorpe on the 17th of February 1857. He left his home that same year with his wife Mary Ann where they became the landlords for the Swan Inn, Swan Lane in Norwich. He wouldn't win his first title until he took it from Sam Hurst in 1862 who received it a year prior after Tom Sayers retired from prize fighting. He would unfortunately lose his title the year after in 1863 to Tom King in a grueling 20, ma 20 round match despite beating him the year prior. Mace would quickly regain his title as King received heavy damage from the fight and was forced to retire early. In 1969, Jem Mace traveled to New York City to give some exhibition mas matches, but was provoked by, an Ameri by the American champ Tom Allen for a $5,000 match. He beat Tom Allen and earned the title of Champion of the World. There is even a life-size statue of their fight in Kenner, Louisiana, the site where the fight took place. He spent his remaining years giving exhibitions in both America and England, and he with the help of Marcus of Queensbury, spread the use of gloved boxing the best he could, preferring it completely over bare fist counterpart. To figure out why Queensbury rules took over, we must know the rules of each. The rules with mandatory glove boxing wouldn't even be established until the Queensbury Code of Rules that were established in 1865. Those rules stated that all combatants must wear gloves. Rounds would last three minutes with one minute breaks were, and were required. And anybody who falls in the ring has 10 seconds to stand up. This became the standard kind of rules we know today for modern professional boxing. Before that set of rules that were filed, there were the London prize ring rules, which stated rounds and, and after someone is knocked down, hitting below the waist and kick, any form of kicking were banned and the winner was only decided until a fighter is unable to fight anymore. So why did the Queensberry rules become the standard over London prize ring? Well, one reason was from the padding from the gloves, combined with there being a set amount of rounds helped solve the problem of the fights dragging on for too long. Another reason was how it made fights more aggressive and exciting, because the fighters didn't need to worry about breaking their knuckles while fighting. The biggest reason was the fact that the Queensberry rules were based off the revised London prize ring rules, making the transition a lot easier. So that's why the Queensberry rules preferred over the London prize ring rules. Thanks for watching.